we've all heard the stereotypes, the fat American, the snobby Parisian, the stoic Russian. When people think of Israelis, they might imagine techies in sandals, soldiers guarding checkpoints, or men with long sideburns and noses buried in holy books. But Israelis encompass so much more than technology, camouflage, or religion. So let's explore. Who are Israelis, really, beyond the headlines and stereotypes? Myth number one, Israelis are rude. Okay, okay, if you've ever stood in line at a falafel stand, you might disagree with me on this one. Hint, there are no lines. But what Americans might call rudeness is actually a cultural emphasis on honesty and directness, or in Israeli slang, speaking dugri, Arabic for speaking straight. Social psychologists believe that this say what you mean and mean what you say attitude can be traced back to Israeli's mandatory draft and army culture. Israel is a hot zone with conflict constantly simmering just beneath its surface. Who has time for etiquette when rockets are raining down? Yet there's also a beauty to this chutzpah. Not only does Israeli directness help business people and innovators express ideas more clearly, but it also speaks to the country's innate sense of community. Go stand by the Western Wall on a Friday night or at the back of an Israeli synagogue near the end of services, and there's a solid chance you'll be invited to a Shabbat meal by someone you've never met before. <laughs> Mr. Bus, it's not unusual for a stranger going in the same direction to offer you a ride. Israel is a small country that acts like one big, sometimes dysfunctional family. And if there's anyone you can be direct with, it's family. Shut up! You don't talk to me I like that! Israelis might also sound terse when they speak because of the structure of the Hebrew language. It's ancient and linguistically rich, but it has roughly 80% fewer words than English. That means that saying the exact same sentence simply takes a lot less time in Hebrew than it does in many other languages. So while it might be totally normal to say, can I get the check please, in English, in Hebrew, cheshbon, is the norm. And the way we speak inevitably influences our behavior and cultural norms. Just remember that next time someone cuts you off at the falafel stand because you're taking a little too long to order. Myth number two, Israelis are white. There's a misconception that Israel is a country brimming with white Europeans. But did you know that the history of Jews in the land of Israel traces way back? Jews lived in the land of Israel long before the Babylonian and Roman empires took over and deported tens of thousands of them, creating a worldwide diaspora that stretched across the Middle East, North Africa, and Europe. While it's true that nearly 50% of Jewish Israelis moved back to their ancestral homeland from European countries, the other 50% emigrated from over 100 countries across the globe. Today, Israel is home to Jews from India, Ethiopia, Yemen, Morocco, Russia, Argentina, and many other countries. And not all Israelis are Jewish. Roughly 20% of Israelis identify as non-Jewish Arabs, and that number is growing. Israelis are Christians, Baha'i, Samaritans, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, Circassians, Druze, the list goes on. Myth number three, Israelis are extremely religious. Say the word Israel and many people envision bearded men in black hats, Muslims bowing to the Muazin's prayer call, or Jesus striding across the Galilee. Israel is sacred to the three Abrahamic faiths, as well as to Baha'is and other religious groups. But nearly half of Jewish Israelis consider themselves chiloni, a term without an exact translation, but somewhere along the lines of secular. Only 22% identify as religious, and the rest? fall somewhere in between, identifying as masorti, or traditional. They may light Shabbat candles, or say the blessing over wine on Friday nights, pray through meditative yoga, or attend synagogue a couple of times a year. Many political disagreements come down to the secular religious divide in Israel. Should public transportation run on Shabbat? Should Jewish law dictate civil law? There's a constant debate over who gets to decide what constitutes a Jewish state. If Jerusalem is Israel's religious center, Tel Aviv is its wild cosmopolitan sibling where people of all religions flock for a night out. Myth number four, Israeli soldiers are all Jewish. You probably know that Israel has a mandatory draft, but you might not know that many of the most vital soldiers serving the Jewish state aren't even Jewish. 
Since 1956, when Druze leaders signed a covenant of blood with the Israeli government, members of the Druze population have been serving their country. With an 80% enlistment rate for Druze men, their community has one of the highest rates of enlistment in Israeli society. For a while, the Druze even had their own battalion called the Cherev, or Sword Battalion, though it was closed down once members expressed their desire to join other units. Many Drew soldiers have sacrificed their lives in their service, including police officer Zidane Saif, who died trying to stop the horrific 2014 terrorist attack in a Harnof synagogue, and Hael Sitawe and Kamil Shnan, who were killed on the Temple Mount in 2017. Drew's officers have also served as commanders of some of the most elite units in the IDF, such as the Golani Infantry Brigade and the Shaldag Air Force Unit. The number of Arab citizens choosing to serve in the IDF has grown over the years, and a couple hundred IDF soldiers identify as Muslim Bedouins and Christian Arabs. Myth number five, Israelis are defined by the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Conversation about Israel is so wrapped up with the messy politics of the Middle East that it's hard to talk about Israel without talking about politics. When Israel comes up on the news, it's usually about the most recent round of rocket fire from Gaza or the latest IDF operation. While the conflict may often lurk in the back of Israelis' minds, the main factor in Israelis' voting choices in the November 2022 election was actually the economy and the high cost of living. Only 11% listed the party's platform on foreign policy and security as the strongest influence on their voting decision. In everyday life, common issues that consume Israelis include exorbitant housing prices, growing gaps between the rich and poor, and dangerous drivers. And what are teens thinking about? How to go viral on social media, passing their next exam, impressing their crush, the same concerns of teens the world over. Plenty of Israelis do care deeply about the conflict, and the majority would like to see a return to the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. But the conflict has been going on for so long that it's taken a back seat to the more immediate concerns like affordable housing. There's an old expression, two Jews, three opinions. And the same goes for Israelis. Israelis are stereotyped and blamed for their government probably more than any other nation. But even when it comes to shared concerns, there is no unified consensus among Israelis on the right way to behave, live, or believe. For almost a century, Israelis have revived an ancient identity by creating a modern society, one that embraces diversity of faith and ethnic background, combines East with West, speaks Dugri, and wants to live its best life. There's not just one way to be Israeli. Israel is a weave of blending and overlapping identities, and isn't that what makes it beautiful?